The United Nations Sustainable Development Solutions Network published its 10th annual World Happiness Report a few weeks ago. The report uses survey data from about 150 countries around the world to assess national levels of happiness. And while the data contained in the report is interesting in its own right, it's also an interesting attempt to encourage us to think about the nature and purpose of economic development more broadly or in the words of the resolution which first authorized the report, to give more importance to happiness and well-being in determining how to achieve and measure social and economic development. But what does the report conclude? What makes a country happy? Hey everyone, I'm Noah Zerbe. I'm a professor of global politics at California State Polytechnic University Humboldt. In this video series, I try to explain the concepts and theories behind current events, all in two minutes or less. Published annually, the United Nations World Happiness Report ranks about 150 countries around the world on their relative levels of happiness. It evaluates happiness through an annual Gallup survey, which asks respondents several questions to get at their overall sense of subjective well-being. Individual results are averaged by country to provide a relative national happiness score. This year's results look pretty similar to the results from last year, and indeed, over the course of the about decade-long reporting, results have been remarkably stable. The Nordic countries continue to dominate the upper positions, with Finland holding the top position as the world's happiest country for the fifth consecutive year. Denmark placed second, Iceland third, Sweden seventh, and Norway eighth. The consistently high rankings of the Nordic countries in the report is usually attributed to a variety of factors, including relatively healthy life expectancies, high GDPs per capita, strong social safety nets, low levels of, cor of corruption, and high levels of social trust, as well as generosity and a sense of community. By contrast, countries towards the bottom of the global rankings tend to be characterized by high levels of poverty and inequality, as well as ongoing domestic conflicts and civil war. Afghanistan placed last in the survey at 146th place, and other countries near the bottom of the list include Sierra Leone, Rwanda, Zimbabwe, and Lebanon. The United States placed 16th overall this year. There's a lot of really interesting data to unpack in the report, and I'll link to the report in the description if you're interested in checking it out. But that's it for now. If you found this helpful, click the thumbs up button and consider subscribing to catch future explainers as I release them. Please leave any questions you have about this video, or if you have any suggestions for future explainer topics, please leave those in the comments section below as well. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a good day. Bye.